What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good morning, happy Thursday. Today is a massive day. Yes, we are talking softball playoffs, quarterfinals. We are facing a team that is 12 and 1, 13 and 1, something ridiculous. Oh, it's going to be an interesting game. I hope it doesn't rain here. Game's at 7.30. If we win, we go right to the semis at 8.30. Big night ahead. Big night ahead. Wish me luck. I hope we can pull through. Anyways, a lot to talk about. Listen, the SEC, they're on life support, buddy. They're in a lot of trouble here. I'm going to review that with you. Plus, I'm going to review some interesting news coming out of different camps. We're going to talk about Flair, the Spark Airdrop. We're going to talk about CNBC and Bitcoin and where Bitcoin needs to go without further ado. Let's get into it. Bitcoin is currently sitting at 39000 Hasn't impressed us yet. I'll explain that in a second. XRP is at a dollar six. Listen, listen. Check the tweet history. Yesterday I made two calls on XRP's price. I told you it was gonna hit a dollar three. I told you it was gonna hit a dollar four. Bada beam, bada boom. Got it done, right? Right now, a dollar six. Love to see it. It is up three and a half percent in the last 24 hours. Where do we go from here? Well, we're gonna go where Bitcoin goes because Bitcoin is still not out of the swamp just yet. And you know how this works. All the other coins follow the prices of Bitcoin. Bitcoin dominance is still sitting at 41%. The total market cap creeped up just a tiny bit at 1.77 trillion. Love to see it. Let's jump right into this. CNBC Fast Money. Bitcoin drops to kick off the month, but Brian Kelly says he sees a bottom forming and a big opportunity for gains. Let's have a listen to this. Here we go. And pulling back today, but holding above that 36,000 level. Bitcoin, though, down 37% over the past month. And our resident Bitcoin baller, BK, says the worst of the recent sell off could be over. BK, explain. Yeah, so for me, when you look at Bitcoin, it's all about network effect and really about address growth. So one of the key metrics that I look at when I'm managing crypto money is how fast addresses are growing versus what the market is expecting. Uh, the addresses to grow. So what we're looking at right now in the charts that I brought along our address growth is basically flat but the market is implying that we're going to have a decline of almost 20 percent in address growth. We haven't seen that type of differential since March of 2020 and generally when the when Bitcoin gets that mispriced it is the sign of that bottoming process. And so we look back to March of 2020 when we had a massive divergence. That was when Bitcoin was 3,500 and it, and it roared to 60,000. We're looking at the exact same type of situation here where it looks like Bitcoin's trying to bottom. The market is mispricing what's going on underneath the, under, the fundamentals underlying Bitcoin. How much conviction, BK, do you have in this interpretation of your charts in that are you adding, I mean, I know you're probably pretty long, but do you think that this yeah. is an opportunity? <laughs> I do, I do. I, I mean, I, I, I personally added to our fund this month because I think it's that big of an opportunity in the fund. We are long and getting longer. Now, what I would like to see, obviously, Bitcoin's very momentum driven. So now we need to see some price follow through here and get that momentum going. Uh, but to me, the story hasn't changed one bit, right? We, we're getting institutional adoption. Uh, we're getting uh, as an inflationary hedge. And regulatory-wise, we're getting um, watered down regular. It's not going to be banned. We're talking about bringing it into the fold. Those are all positive things for me. And that, to me, is reflected in that mispricing. All right, we had enough of him right there. Listen, long story short, what he's saying. Bitcoin's been in a range, a thirty to forty thousand dollar range, a consolidation period for such a long time. What Brian Kelly here, their resident B Bitcoin baller, I think they call him. I want that name. They said that they see a momentum that is building. When a momentum builds and there's more Bitcoin wallets, that it sends the price up. Listen, this tweet matters right here. This is the only tweet that you need to listen to and you need to follow. It's from yours truly, XRP News underscore. Make sure you give him a follow. As, as I've been saying for weeks now, Bitcoin has to break 40 and 42,000. Until then, everything else is just noise. Bitcoin needs to break those two key levels. Not even those two key levels. Just look at 42,000. Bitcoin breaks 42,000. 
off into the race as we go. We're going to see a 50, 60, 70. We're going to continue this next leg up in this bull market. But Bitcoin is struggling to break 42,000. It is struggling to even break 40,000. You know what happens. And it's been my message on this channel for quite some time. When something sits stagnant, when something sits in a range for quite some time what usually happens is that it goes down okay there is still a possibility bitcoin is going to drop currently bitcoin has nothing going for it institutional adoption where show me the institutions people buying bitcoin show me these people new money flowing into people into the market or into bitcoin show me the new money because the bitcoin dominance keeps dropping in order for your favorite asset, altcoin, cryptocurrency, whatever you want to call it, to break away from Bitcoin's dominant hold, one major thing needs to happen. One major catalyst. It needs to get regulatory approval. You know which coin's about to receive regulatory approval? XRP. Where do you think all that money sitting on the sidelines? And is currently about a trillion dollars of it. Where do you think it's going to flow into an asset that is here from the United States that has received or will be receiving regulatory approval from the SEC, which has already approval as a currency from the Department of Justice and FinCEN? Where do you think that's money going? When that money comes into the market and flows into XRP, you are going to see XRP rise so fast and leave Bitcoin in the dust. Plus, we have Flare coming out. Either this month or next month, the network goes live. It is going to help unlock trap value on the XRP ledger. That is another catalyst to break away as Bitcoin still sits there without any changes over the last decade. Think about this. All you have to do is hold people. And then from the wrap the economy, look at this. This is massive. Co-op Finance House is making some noise in the press, including a mention of Ripple. Apologies for the translations. The first KFH has also recently launched FX pricing, an instant transfer service to your home using you to your home from Turkey using RippleNet. We've known about this service, but now they're advertising it. This is big time because they are using RippleNet. And what does that mean? They're using RippleNet. What's the next step, people? to lever lev leverage, can't say it, on-demand liquidity. The Incredible Crypto puts out a great tweet. You need to remember this. It says, at the time of launch, the Uni airdrop was worth about $1,400. Today, it's worth over 11000 That's even at the falling 30 to 40% after its highs. I said, I said the same thing, and I will say now for the upcoming Flare airdrop, don't be in a rush to sell as soon as you get it. Listen, I know most of you out there, you don't understand DeFi. You don't understand what they're doing. You don't get what you need to do if you coins to contribute to the network, to the system, and how to make gains and how to help unlock value. I get it. Listen, it's tough. It's not easy. I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Once I do, I got you. But hold. Hold your Spark tokens. Yes, I know. If you have 100,000 xrp you're going to get a hundred thousand spark over a span of x amount of years and if they are worth a dollar each you just came into a th hundred thousand dollars that's a lot of money that is life-changing money for a lot of people that will pay off a lot of condos around the world but as this example of uni it was worth 1400 now it's worth over eleven thousand. just imagine if you hold this thing for a couple of years don't get too excited is all I am saying. And then from the wrap the condom and again, recent articles from the Boston University School of Hospitality Administration note slow crypto adoption and Ripple in particular twice XRP. Interesting how they look at it from perspective of DeFi and cite money grams used. Here's the article from Boston U. We'll read the highlighted part to you. With further adoption, customer to customer transactions and payment options local and cross-border in primary and secondary markets can and will happen for hospitality project products and services with DeFi platforms as MoneyGram has done with Ripple for its international money transfer payments. You know MoneyGram is scratching at the door to get back on and tap into that on-demand liquidity. You know you saw from the Q, the Q reports that were coming out, the core reports that were coming out, how much money they were saving. And their books were finally turning over to the positive side since they've been in debt for so long. 
they will be one of the first to jump back on. And then, touching on the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit, the whole entire thumbnail of this video, what this video is about, what it intends to be about from here on out. James K. Flynn, this just came out last night at 747. Says SEC vs. Ripple, after a two-and-a-half-year investigation and almost six months after filing the complaint, the SEC has just requested that the court extend the deadlines for both fact and expert discovery, discovery by 60 days. I'm going to read Erie's tweet. She says, Jim, for what reasons does this typically happen? Why do they need more time for discovery? Are they trying to wear down the other side to reach settlement? SEC needs to regroup. What are your thoughts? So, James Flynn chimes in. Let me hit his little his little link so we can see all the tweets. He says, party asks for extension of discovery all the time. Here, however, it's a government agency asking for the extension after a two-and-a-half-year formal government investigation. There's a two-and-a-half-year head start on the case using all the tools and resources for the, that the U.S. government has at its disposal. In my opinion, it means that the enforcement action was filed before the investigation was even completed. Which to me means the SEC still is still, is still scrambling to put in case, to put the case together. I don't think Judge Netburn will be particularly impressed. And then number three, the SEC's motion completely disrespect Judge Netburn's strong and efficient handling of the case and her fast resolution of dispute. Like on a Sunday over Memorial Day weekend, the SEC never addresses why it's so ill-equipped after a two and a half year investigation. And he goes on to say. And that's it. Okay, good. So I want to touch on two thing, two key things here. He says, in my opinion, the enforcement action was filed before the investigation was even completed. So they had two and a half years, three years, under Clayton to do an investigation to really gather all the facts so they could come into this lawsuit swinging. And they failed to do so. And you want to know what else? I bet you this lawsuit never would have even dropped if Clayton wasn't leaving, giving Ripple the old middle finger. That's why this whole lawsuit wasn't done or ever completed because Clayton said, oh my God, this is my last day. I have to go. Things are getting heated. News is probably out behind the scenes that the SEC is going at the Ripple. You saw Brad knew because he told us before the SEC was about to attack him. So Clayton was like, hey, hey, guys, listen, my bad, my bad, SEC. This is my fault. Drop in the lawsuit. I'm out. You'll finish your investigation. Just ask for a request in time. Here's the craziest part. The judge has told them, has told both sides, Ripple and the SEC, she wants a speedy, fast resolution on disputes. Now the SEC wants an extension so they can dig up more facts because everything that they have has produced a nothing burger. She is not going to be happy. There is no way I see her allowing them. 60 more days to gather information. They had two and a half to three years. They aren't prepared. They should have been prepared. They should have known. They aren't going after Kin. They're not going after Ass Coin or Elon Coin or Pumping Coin here. Who would have folded as soon as they saw there was a lawsuit coming. They're going after a Ripple, a powerhouse, a company who is valued over $10 billion, who is ready to fight this to the last day to get what they want because they know what they're doing. They know what they have done since day one. There is nothing illegal about it. I believe Judge Netburn is not going to be happy with the SEC. I believe she throws it out. She tells them, you are not getting any more time. You had three years. Get your bleep together if you know what i'm saying listen that's where i'm gonna leave it wish me luck in softball tonight let's get a win i would just be happy to win this quarterfinal games and make it to the semifinals that would be great i don't know but hey next year if summer ball starts tuesday got a new team put together we are going to be fire that's gonna do it for me listen wash your damn hands be nice and be kind of each other ripple pan wiggle is out